Hey! Welcome back. It's it's a matter of respect. Greetings, community. I'm back again with a new video. I'm testing out my uh, new equipment. It's a little too sunny. Uh, it's like 100 degrees here in Washington uh, for this week, I guess. It's going to be super hot. Uh, but I got a lot to show you. Uh, I have my last two weeks worth of comics and got my uh, pre order in today for this week. So we're going to crack that open. Let's start with cover buys. Okay, first we got a beautiful art gem cover to the uh, Hellfire Gala uh, event. I actually flipped through and read this. Doesn't it isn't as bad as Thinking Critical and and Comics Elite would have you think. Um, and it's not great either. So and then I have I have a two for here. This is the DC vs. Vampires uh, Coffin Edition and Crypt Edition. I basically reprints the first six issues of the series. This is one of my favorite series of last year and uh, going into this year uh, by Tynion and Rosenberg. This one is obviously a Lost Boys uh, cover homage, and the other one is Breakfast Club uh, cover homage. It looks like they might even be like connecting covers, maybe, or if it's this way, they might look like they might be connecting, but same background connecting color, connecting covers. And I have Thank you, Billy, from Economics and Commerce for sending me a copy of uh, Speechless Number 1, uh, the Pool Boy cover issue and interview. Uh, you can check out his channel, economicsandcomics.com, uh, or Economics and Comics uh, on YouTube, and his store is economicsandcomics.com. And this is his own uh, exclusive series called Speechless, where he interviews... Uh, specifically for the cover of this book, uh, and lets them do whatever they want, and he tells you all about their, uh, what do you call those things, all their tools, and uh, their studios and stuff, and it's really interesting, it's a pretty good book. Uh, this is issue one, this is uh, Cool Boy issue two, I should have uh, middle of August, because I did a pre-order with stuff that doesn't come out till August, when I ordered number two, but number two will be here in August. Uh, in the last cover by, I bought this a while ago, but this is the... Uh, is Frank Avila? This is after David Masicelli. You gotta remember who did this cover. Oh, this is Jorge Fornia's After David Masicelli. This was originally a cover of uh, Marvel H Magazine back in the 80s, promoting uh, Daredevil Born Again. But This is uh, Daredevil Woman Without Fear number two. Uh, I went to my uh, LCS and they had it up on the wall the week it came out, so I grabbed it because fortunately it was a 1 in 25. Alright, last couple weeks with the comics, quick reviews. Amazing Spider-Man, I, I liked how the storyline ended. Uh, it did have a kind of his peaks and valleys as far as the quality of the story, and I don't mind John Romita Jr.'s art style. So uh, overall I thought it was a pretty interesting uh, first arc, and I'll continue. And this was something I did not enjoy was the conclusion of uh, Joker number 15, which was the conclusion of James Tynion's Joker arc. Uh, it's just... Maybe the first five issues were the best of this, and then it continually went downhill from there. And the punchline backup was okay. And what I'm really mad about this is every other issue of Joker has a punchline uh, B cover except this one which I had to choose between three Joker covers, and obviously I'll pick the updated Killing Joke cover by Brian Bland, where he has a, uh, what do you call it, a camera phone rather than a camera. Uh, but, uh, kind of a lame ending, and that, and same goes true for, uh, Batman Catwoman number 12, uh, where Catwoman's daughter says, I would have rather had one of the things you stole! And, and where I'm thinking, I would have rather not read this entire series, it sucks so bad. Anyway, it definitely, he says it was how he wanted to finish his run on Batman, and had he ended his run on Batman like this, uh, the sales would have just continued to tank. Uh, awful. And next we have Carnage, number four. This is up there with my favorite uh, Marvel titles going right now. Uh, interesting take on the character, and pretty great art, and the covers are always fire sick like this. Here's uh, Batman number 125, one of four covers I bought for it. Because I bought the Matina cover, uh, and I bought 
the Simone, Simone de Mayo uh, acetate cover, which came the week after this, but is put away already, so it's not going to be shown with this last week's comics, or two weeks ago comics, because it's already put away. But this is the Jimenez design cover that was on FOC, which popped to about $20 or so, but I paid $3 for it because I ordered it from Discount Comic Book Service because I resolicited it. So I'm not worried about how much it costs, and I just think it's a pretty cool looking cover. And first, the Dark Space here is pretty solid. Next, we have uh, Ghost Rider number four. This has been an interesting first star, too. I've enjoyed it. I was going to quit because I heard Wolverine was going to be in issue six, but then they re solicited issue six for September solicits after I didn't buy it in August solicits. And since they re solicited it, I'm going to continue to collect it because it is actually a pretty good series. Here is uh, the aforementioned DC vs. Vampires. This is uh, number seven. This will be the last uh, Francisco Matino cover on the series before they switch to Zerdy Cheesecake Girl covers. Uh, I can't really even see that because it's too sunny. Too sunny. Too sunny. You can't see it very well. But that's number seven. Yeah. I'm enjoying that series. And if you haven't read the two one shots, particularly the Harley Quinn one shot, you won't understand what's going on towards the end of this issue. All right, here is Dark Crisis number two, awesome Dark Deathstroke versus Nightwing battle cover, and the series is now called Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths as of San Diego Comic Con, but uh, started out starting out pretty slow, rolling out, and then I don't think Deathstroke would just fall to be a lap dog to the main villain behind this and just follow him out of there quietly and go, oh, I'm going to stop what I'm doing here and just follow you because you told me. I don't think. That's not Deathstroke's type of character. All right, and here is, uh, I guess this would be two weeks ago's comic starting here. This is Barbaric. Uh, the Harvest Blades one-shot. The, the art really detracts in this, and the story is just kind of okay compared to the original three-issue arc. But still, some pretty funny stuff, especially involving the axe. There's New Think number two. This was a big step down from uh, New Think number one, which is pretty clever story about how cell phones have uh, uh, pretty much become the masters of society and humanity and how we do everything they say, which is, uh, I got a kick out of uh, issue two, is kind of a story about how an evil king hates artistic expression and has a little analogy to people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, and it was just kind of boring. It was a step down from issue one. Here is... Uh, uh, Avengers, X-Men, Eternals, Axe, uh, what do you call that? Eve of Judgment, this is the prelude issue. Uh, basically, it has like a narration part, uh, introducing you to like what the X-Men are doing, what the Avengers are doing, and it's mostly about, uh, the one guy that, uh, what's his name plays? The creepy guy from, uh, what do you call him? Uh, the Killing of the Sacred Deer. That that actor, that creepy kid actor who played that Eternal in the movie. It's that version of the character in this, which I can't remember his name right now. Uh, but uh, essentially, he, he's planning to destroy the mutants as being an excess deviation to make the rest of the Eternals think, hey, no, hey, you actually did something and we got rid of all the deviations so now we can all be friends again, basically. And he goes to uh, New Krakoa, and right as they're about to New Krakoa, they find out that uh, the island Krakoa uh, is actually connected to the Earth, and one of the eternal tenants is protect the protect the Earth machine. So if you blew up, if you blew up the Krakoa, it would hurt the Earth machine. So they had to scratch that plan. So then at the end, he goes and visits. Uh, Thanos, his grandfather, Uranus, Uranus, whatever he's called, and Uranus is like, oh, you're desperate enough to put me in play, huh? Let's get this done. So it was an interesting beginning. And then this issue kind of takes place exactly following... Uh, actually, this takes place just before this one, because uh, two of the main Eternals want to use Mr. Sinister to kind of uh, find out if they're a deviation or not. And they ask a third Eternal, hey, if we kidnap one of these X-Men, will, uh, will you be cool with that? 
And they're like, he's like, I definitely wouldn't be cool with that. And then they showed him going to the next room, and they kidnapped Mr. Sinister, and they're like, uh, I guess we should be glad we shouldn't have told him uh, we already actually did it. But this is an awesome uh, Emma Frost cover by uh, Mark Brooks. And then the Emma Frost drawing here is pretty cool, how she can't sleep because, uh, basically because she feels like a slut, I guess. <laughs> anyway, and then we have Punisher number four, where, uh... Maria has been resurrected, Maria Castle has been re resurrected, but she's going all crazy wondering where the kids are, and the evil hand lady is telling Frank, we may, we may, if you keep doing this as well as you're doing it, we're going to resurrect your kids, but then at the end, there are a few uh, hand ninjas who were spared by uh, Ares, the god of war, because they, uh, because he wanted them to go back to the castle and say, uh, Ares fucked us up, and the evil hand lady's like, well, now they're failures to the hand, so you should uh, terminate them. And he's like, no, uh, I want to go and terminate Ares. That's, I want to kill the bad people, not not my own people. And so the evil hand lady is like, oh, so you're saying you want them to be more like you? Okay. So she has their families flown in of the hand ninjas and murders all their families in front of them and then dresses them more to look exactly like this, like the Punisher, and the Punisher's like, who are these guys? And she's like, there's those ninjas that failed you, but now they're your Punisher ninjas because they've experienced exactly what you have. And he's like, what did you do? And she's like, I murdered their families in front of them. And then he has like this freaked out look on his face. And they show him waking up Maria. And he says, Maria, it's time to go. And he's all covered in blood. So did he murder the evil hand lady and now he has to escape the hand? It's only halfway through the miniseries, so I doubt it. But we'll see what happens. And this is Superman. Dark Crisis, Worlds Without the Justice League, Superman. That's really uh, great art by Chris Burnham and a normal uh, Tom King story, which basically there's two channels, Thinking Critical and Comics Elite. They, they hate everything Tom King, everything Tom Taylor, you know. So I will say I don't, I don't dislike it as much as those two channels, and I actually can enjoy these comics and whatever is so horribly wrong with him in those people's eyes, I, I don't see it, because, I mean, before I was getting it all from free, reading it to library, and even paying for it, I still quite enjoy it, and basically this is, uh, Clark Kent getting to relive, uh, uh, Jonathan Kent's, uh, young adulthood and teenage years, which he missed because Ben just took them away, and then in the end they have a backup story where Aquaman knows he's in a fantasy, and he says, when I get out of here, I'm going to rip your fucking throat out, so you better be ready, ready for me to come out. So that was probably a better story of the two, actually. But overall, it was a pretty good one-shot, and it wasn't overpriced. And speaking of Tom Taylor, here's Tom Taylor with Nicole Maines writing the introduction of Dreamer into Superman, Son of kal -El. And this is, basically, all this is is uh, John being scared for his new boyfriend, and says, oh, I'll hide you in the fortress of solitude. And when he gets there and opens it with the 10,000 pound keys, 10,000 pound key, uh, Dreamer's already inside, and she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in here, but I have to be here because, uh, I have to tell you what's going to happen, and then you see, like, a five or six page story of, uh, Bendix from the island, uh, where Jay Nakamura came from, uh, he's one, basically, and they show him, like, holding down, uh, Batman, and Batman's like, Oh, it's already over, John, but don't let him win. And then Batman gets his throat slit. And then it cuts back to the regular time, and Dreamer's there, and like John's like, wow, that's pretty heavy. When's that going to happen? And she's like, it happens in three days. So that was kind of a cool... I know it's obviously not going to happen like that, because I'm not sure when this takes place in accordance to uh, Dark Crisis, or when Clark comes back to the Earth uh, in August. Well, wait, it's not August. It is August. It's July now. So Clark's coming back in September, and there's going to be a four-part story where he is there with John, but it's all going on at the same time as Dark Crisis, which is this all taking place before Dark Crisis, during Dark Crisis? It doesn't make any sense. King Spawn, uh, I've just been basically buying it for the covers for a while, but I do flip through it, and it's a pretty interesting story. I may, like, grab all 12 issues and read it all at once. It's just McFarland. uh... I think my friend is writing more of it than it says. It says it's by Sean Lewis, but uh, with additional stuff by Tom McFarlane. But I can tell a Tom McFarlane story 
like over wordy for the point of being wordy. So, yeah. I think we'll probably have to do that. Here's Future State Gotham. This is number 15. Three more issues of Future State Gotham. I have enjoyed this story more or less, and it's only $4, and it's black and white, and there's no ads, so that's kind of cool. So, even though you're paying $4, there's no ads, so it's black and white, you get no ads, you get a good backup story. Backup story in this one is actually a bit of color in it as well. And especially in this story, you got Dick Grayson is on drugs and thinks he's Batman. Uh, Bruce Wayne has been saved like he was at the end of uh, the Catwoman Future State story. And towards the end of, uh, what's that one called? Towards the end of uh, Dark Detective. So he's there. Bruce Wayne's there. Uh, the main character in here is uh, Jason Todd as he's uh, joined the magistrate as a cop. So it's Jason Todd, Bruce Wayne, Dick Grayson, and then Damien 666 from the Grant Morrison run uh, comes out of hell. And then Hush is there pretending to be Bruce Wayne, telling Damien what to do. So it's basically five Batman at once uh, all coming together. It's called Batman at War, and this is the middle of that story. And it ends at issue 18, and it's been entertaining. And then here's Dead Box. Uh, geez, I think I read Dead Box number two last summer, uh, possibly, maybe last spring. I can't remember. It was a really long time ago. Uh, and it's been so long that they actually put it in a, uh, what do you call this thing? What do you call those? Mylite. They said they don't have Mylites anymore, so I can only order it in regular bag and boards. But it's uh, Mylites. Uh, but this comic's so old that my, my, uh, my preferences back then were my lights, so, so since I still had it on the poll, and they didn't actually cancel it for resolicitations like 4 and 5, it came in the my light, and 4 and 5, I, I don't give a shit, I'm not gonna read it, I'm, if I, if I do see it, like, at my comic shop, I might grab it, but I'm not gonna, like, pay extra to read it or anything, maybe the trade will come to the library, I have no idea. Here's, uh, these are my favorite books of the last two weeks. Here we got Slumber. This is, uh, Slumber number five of six. And it says to be concluded on the last page, and I dearly hope that's the first story arc, because this has been, just been a treat. The art is trippy and wild, and the story is entertaining. And this has been one of my favorite, uh, new image series of 2022. So, uh, check it out. I always get the B cover. Moon Knight best series uh, ongoing at Marvel right now. Uh, this one has uh, art by the B artist. Uh, I never remember his name. The guy who doesn't draw noses. Uh, usually doesn't draw noses. Frederico Sabatini. He usually uh, won't draw the noses, but in here he did pretty decent art. And it has Taskmaster basically saying, I'm too much of a pussy to be your hitman on Moon Knight because Moon Knight's a total badass and I'm scared of him. Uh, this is probably... In the top two comics I read in the last two weeks, this is Dig, a sink tale by uh, John Lees and Alex Cormack. No surprise I like this. He's my favorite creator. My last video was all about John Lees. Uh, this is really excellent. I really enjoyed it. However, uh, it's very non-linearly told, especially the last, like, 15 pages. And I don't know if that might be, like, it was put together wrong because it's a Kickstarter or something. Because it's like, his wife says, okay, I'm going to go out because he's in danger and I don't leave my husband behind. And then they show the killer who's after Dig on the phone saying, uh, don't tell me how to do my job. I'm going to do this. And on the very next page, he's in a field talking to someone where Dig is hiding. Just the very next page. Like, on the bottom of the one panel, he's on the phone. On the top of the next panel, the next page. When you flip the page, he's in the field. And then... They have the final confrontation, and they fight and fight and fight, and then Dig wins, and then they show uh, Dig. They show a page of the the bad gangster talking to another gangster who's higher up. Who says, "I'm coming to town. You better watch out for me." And then it shows Dig and his wife, and his wife's like, "Dig's like, we're probably gonna have to move now because they're never gonna stop coming." And she's like, "It's all right as long as we remain a family." And then they show uh, her in the street on the phone going. Oh, you found him? Uh, and then she sees the blue clown with the vans in it, and she gets scared. And then the next page, they show him getting patched up by the woman who was attacked by the clowns in issue six, saying, I know you're going to survive this because I survived this, and anyone can... So it just seemed like all those scenes were completely out of order 
in a just a, a not a non-linear uh, way that is uh, good for the story. But otherwise, the art was incredible. Uh, I loved it. It's 60 pages that you must love. And then I read this page first, actually, at work. Uh, and it kind of spoiled what's coming up next, but it's awesome. I can't wait. I don't know if you can see that with the sun glare, but... Supposed to be later this year, but it's going to be in November, or December if it is, because we have uh, solicitations through October. And at the very end of this video, I'll talk about uh, uh, my favorite solicitations I saw for October. And next one is The Closet. This is by James Tinian and Fullerton. Uh, I've been enjoying the series. Uh, I saw what the 1 in 25 looks for issue 3, and I'm cover buying it, even though it cost me $23. It's just a really cool cover by uh, Martin Simmons. And here's a couple of new uh, Scout books I ordered directly from Scout because I missed them on the pre-order and they didn't have them at my shop. There's Agent of World by Dennis Camp and Fatilia Rasukin. I don't know how to say their first or last name. And this is the Ballad of Gordon Barleycorn. This is fucking nutty. And at the end of this, it leads you to believe that it isn't a one-shot, that it's actually a series. So... I wouldn't mind if it's a series, but I probably won't buy any more issues, but it's a pretty funny story. And Agent of the Worlds it is, for, is a four-issue series, and I, I enjoyed it. I'm glad I special ordered those directly from Scout. Thank you, Scout. Uh, Gunslinger Spawn. This is my favorite of the Spawn series. I was getting this, and King Spawn, and the Scorch. The Scorch I dropped. It's just... I don't know. I'll read issue one through seven, and then I'll decide if I'm going to uh, catch back up on the rest. But I've dropped it for now, but Gunslinger Spawn. And then, uh, fuck this place. Not, I hate this place. Okay, it's I hate this place. Politically, PC, you gotta be PC or if no one will buy your comic. Fuck this place, uh, is probably one of my top five favorite series of 2022. Uh, sometimes I see a series coming out and I kind of go big on it. I'm going big on this one. I quite enjoy it. House of Slaughter. This is issue, uh, Number six, this is the body bag variant by uh, Kyle Hotz. This is part one of the Scarlet Mask story, which is really enjoyable. You meet Edwin, who's a uh, Scarlet Mask. Uh, they're kind of like, they work in the libraries of uh, the House of Slaughter. Oh, the House of Slaughter? Yeah, the House of Slaughter. Uh, they work in, he works in the library there. But then the guy, his boss in the library goes, I think you should go uh, check out these killings that are going on and get a little more field work. It might do you some good. And they show him on the ferry drawing pictures of monsters in his uh, art sketchbook. And then he's talking to a little boy who's like, uh, oh, you're scared of monsters? I want you to close your eyes and visualize uh, your scariest monster. And then the boy, you see him close his eyes and the page is black and then you see the monster show up on the bottom panel and then they show the guy sketching and then he goes, is this kind of what it looked like? So he, he must be kind of psychic and then the uh, and then like, uh, what do you call it, a park ranger comes in and goes, hey, who are you? Why are you talking to this boy? And he's like, oh, I'm just here sketching the landscapes and the guy looks at his sketchbook and all the pages are blank and the guy's like, oh, you're a pretty shitty artist but enjoy doing the, enjoy doing the landscapes uh, and then he find out he's been uh, sketching all of his uh, pictures with the monster blood, which only uh, kids and uh, sighted people from the series can see, as we know. And this is one of my favorite series of 2021, uh, The Righteous, A Righteous Thirst for Vengeance by uh, Rick Remender and Andre Lima Araja. Uh, says a lot in just a few words and beautiful visuals and... This is issue 9. 9? No? Well, this one's issue 6, but I know issue 9 just came out, and I think when we unbox here in just a minute, uh, we're going to have issue 10, and then it ends at issue 11. So, although I'm enjoying the series, I'm glad it's ending because I'm spending a lot on my pre-orders lately, and I've gone to weekly shipping because I was thinking, why, why am I paying $15 for bi-weekly shipping that comes once a month or every three weeks. It's so stupid. I'll pay $6 more and get weekly shipping that actually comes 
about every eight, nine days. So I'm gonna get it at least three times a month that way, if not four times a month. This one showed up today, which is uh, about six days after my last shipment. And then my next shipment, supposedly, is gonna come on Saturday, and that's what the comic's coming out tomorrow on Wednesday. So I'm pretty excited about that, if that actually comes to pass. I wouldn't even mind if they come on Monday. I'm trying to get into these guys for you real quick. Coming off. Coming off. Here we got our uh, invoice. This week, running me $39.65 for this nice stack. That's why I do, uh, by DD, DCBS. All right. First, we got the new issue of uh, Marvel Previews. Marvel Free Previews. I get this free for ordering comics from DCBS. I also have an IDD, IDW sampler of the all new, uh, what do you call these? Creator owned titles, of which I'm going to be getting uh, Dark Spaces, Wildfire, and the other, True Cult looks interesting, but I'm not going to get it. Crashing, Earth Divers, Dead Seas. I may read all of these and trade from the library one day, but I'm definitely going to get a... Uh... Ooh. Stephen Graham Jones, Earth Divers. Maybe I might consider looking at that. But that might have been a... What do you call that? Kickstarter or something, but... Dark Space is Wildfire, Scott Snyder. I get all Scott Snyder. So. Alright, here's the comics from... Uh, I guess this would have been... Last Wednesday. So here's After School number two. This one's by uh, Kate Heron. She's, seems like the first two issues are by uh, filmmakers. First one was by the Moon Knight showrunner guys, and they did uh, a few Netflix original horror movies. Uh, the one I saw was about a guy who whose brother is trying to get his guy who's trying to get his brother off heroin and like handcuffs him to a post for a weekend so he can clean out. And then somehow it turns into some kind of horror movie in the last 20 minutes. Can't remember what it was called, but it was an interesting movie. And then they're also like the showrunner writers on the first few episodes of Moon Knight. Series. Here's Grimm number three. This is the Jenny Prison uh, Reaper cover. This is the Alien Annual number one. This is the Declan Chavley uh, variant. So I get all variant covers on Alien when I get it. And Alien's coming back in September. That's the new number one series. Here it is. This is the final Jenny Frizen B cover on Catwoman and my final issue of Catwoman. Because I haven't read it since Ron V. Uh, well, I read 39. It was so boring. I could barely get through it. But I may read 39 through 45 in one sitting someday. Uh, but since Ron V left, I don't care anymore. Uh, here is the Silver Coin number 12. This is by Stephanie Phillips which isn't usually a glowing endorsement, but I've heard good things online. Here's Gunslinger Spawn. This is number 10. This is an awesome Brett Booth cover. Not sure who this guy is, but he looks pretty badass. Join Gunslinger Spawn. Here is uh, DC vs. Vampires in the All Out War. This is... I think it's Kale New. Did this variant? Okay, yep, Kale New. And then... The variants for three and I mean two and three are by uh, Lyrics Lee, and they're really good uh, female covers. Not quite as cheesecakey as Zerdy on the original series, but they're still uh, female lead covers. There's Locust, The Ballad of Men, issue one or issue five, if you call it, because Locust original series had four issues, and this continues directly off from uh, that. I've been enjoying Locust. I don't know if he's got titles I've kept up on the poll. Uh, here's Department of Truth number 19. This is from June, uh, but I never got it. And finally, I didn't even realize I didn't have it until I saw it. Well, hey, I was wondering why I didn't get the Department of Truth last month. There's 19. And here's Department of Truth, kind of irritating. I collected the uh, B covers 1 through 16, or was it 18? 20, I think. This is 20? No, this is 19. The new, the new arc started on... I forgot the new arc started on 18. But, uh, yeah, so 1 through 17, I got all the B covers. 
And now the B covers are only 1 in 25, so I'm stuck getting all A covers for the rest of the run. I don't, I don't like that idea. I wish they would have uh, continued to have B covers. Because uh, that's how I was collecting it. Now I have to go back to A's. Here's uh, Iron Man number 21. This is a... Uh, this is a B cover. It's by I think it's by Angel and Zuko. Yeah, that's what it says. And in all the solicitations for this cover, Iron Man was on this side, and it said Iron Man Hellcat on all the solicitations. Is I think I got it mixed up with the Iron Man Hellcat special, which I probably would have got if I could have gotten the Art Dream cover, but I never found the Art Dream cover. Here's a uh, Axe Judgment Day Avengers Eternals X Men uh, Judgment Day number one. This is by. Uh, Kieran Gillen and Valerio Shitty, Shitty, uh, who did great work on a uh, sword before it became X Men Red, and enjoy his art quite a bit. And I'm gonna collect every issue or tie-in of this that is uh, by Kieran Gillen and also X Men Red because I'm collecting X Men Red by Al Ewing. And we got one of the better DC ongoing titles here. This is World's Finest by Mark Wade and Dan Mora. Duh. What? I'm in Nightwing, number 94. This is by Taylor and Borges and Lucas. Ah, filling artists instead of uh, the beauty that is uh, Bruno Redondo. At least he does the cover on this, I guess. But I've been enjoying Nightwing since uh, it's been Redondo and, uh, Redondo and Tom Taylor. And it's I've been enjoying them since they were on uh, Suicide Squad, which is where Jay Nakamura and some of his uh, truth people actually first appeared in Suicide Squad. I don't remember it having anything to do with this uh, this place where he comes from, though, but maybe it did. I can't remember. I can't remember reading back that far. Flash 784, the middle part of uh, the search for Barry Allen, Dark Crisis tie-in. I think there's actually four parts to this story, or like a follow-up after the first three parts of this three-part story. So I'll get, I'll at least get the four, and then the issue that comes out in October is about uh, Wally West wrestling with some new villain. So I don't think that has anything to do with it. And then here's another image title that I got based on title and description. This is Rogues Gallery number one. This is the C cover. Uh, can't remember who does it, but. Uh, this is Hannah Rose May and Justin Mason. Uh, are they both writers? No, they're not. Let me see. They could both be writers. I know that uh, Declan and Shelby has something to do with this. Hannah Rose May and Tal... Declan and Shelby do the story. Hannah Rose May is the writer and Justin Mason is a line artist. Okay, Justin Mason. All right. So... An idea by, uh, and let's see how the artist is as long as they have this out. Doesn't tell me. Let's go back to the other page. Uh, cover C is by Justin Mason. Okay. This is a Justin Mason cover. This is the main artist of the series. This, this, this cover looks coolest to me. Uh, so that is the last couple of weeks worth of comics and an unboxing of uh, basically last week's comics and then my next video will be unboxing uh, this week's comics hopefully it'll be out the first part of next week uh, when I go back to work tomorrow I'll keep anything to slow down after that have my days off and make another video and as far as October solicitations I'm really looking forward to uh, there's a new series by uh, What's his name? I just have to look at my phone. I have like the memory of a fly. Give me a minute. Adam Caesar. Adam Caesar. He does the Black T-Shirt Project YouTube channel where he discusses his favorite uh, horror paperbacks that are out of print. Uh, I found him on there during COVID, and then I read his book Clown in a Cornfield uh, that the library ordered in, and I, I read it last year. Uh, and it was too young adult for me, but it was an interesting horror type story. But he has a new Dark Horse comic coming out, a new Dark Horse horror title called The Dead Mall. And then 
the second Scott Snyder comicsology uh, series, which is him and Francisco Francovilla uh, doing uh, Night of the Ghoul. That's coming out in physical format in October. Uh, yes, please. Uh, sign me up. Uh, and then Moon Knight has an annual in October, and it's a Werewolf by Whites, Werewolf by Night story. And there's a cover by Bill Sienkiewicz, which when I looked on uh, Things from Another World the catalog, it's not open order, so looks like I'm at 25 bucks. Because uh, Sienkiewicz Werewolf by Night Moon Knight cover. Yeah. Uh, and there was a couple other titles in October that I was looking forward to. There's, there's like the DC, it's either DC or Marvel, like, horror title, but involving the superheroes. Looked interesting. And there's one more Dark Horse one, too. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Anywho, maybe I'll talk about it in my next video. But, uh, thank you for watching. I'm sorry this video is a little extra long. I've been, I've been gone for a while. Uh... What else has been going on? Uh, I changed my setup over here a little bit. I still have my uh, signed uh, Mary Jane head by John Romita Sr. And then above, uh, to honor uh, Mr. Mark Lanigan, uh, I had this poster signed by him at a show, I think it was 2016. Uh, and then I had it framed after that. And then it's been stuck in a storage area for a while before I kind of created it. So I put him up on the wall. Mark unfortunately passed away in uh, February. Uh, it was my favorite musician, my favorite voice in music. Uh, he will be sorely missed. Uh, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, look forward to a video coming up in, probably this weekend uh, regarding my uh, 50 subscriber giveaway. I'm up over 50 subscribers. I've been, I was teetering there between 51 and 50 and 49, but now I'm up like close to 53, I think. I think it's time enough to give it away. It's the uh, Todd McFarlane signed Spider-Man number one. Uh, this regular uh, green bagged edition uh, newsstand, which I remember buying from uh, 7-Eleven in 1990. Uh, I, bought it right off, I bought like five of them right off the shelf at 7-Eleven and then took it to a con and got it signed there in the black part. And it can't be graded because when you send a bagged book to grading companies, I tear the bag off, and then it wouldn't be a signed comic anymore. So, but, uh, that's, that's up for grabs with the, uh, Batman Last Night on Earth, uh, full miniseries. That's going off to one lucky viewer, but I will have a video, uh, with more rules and, uh, ideas on how to win, but, uh, we'll see you in the next one. Everyone take care out there. Bye-bye.